Every weekday in the United States during the school year, a fleet of about a half a million school buses transport over 25 million kids to and from school and school-sponsored activities. Across the North American continent, that amounts to over 8 billion student trips per year. Over the course of the year, over 17,000 people will be injured in school bus-related accidents. Tragically, about 140 people will be killed. This week, America mourned the loss of five students, including three siblings in Indiana, killed instantly when they were struck by a pickup truck that didn't stop for their school bus. It's hard not to be outraged when one thinks about this tragedy. Their parents had three kids at 7 a.m. and none a half an hour later. The driver of the pickup truck which struck them and their schoolmate, who was critically injured, stated that she saw the lights but didn't realize that it was a stopped school bus. In Tampa, a day later, a car crashed through a bus stop. Five kids and two parents were struck and injured, one critically. This was the fourth of five school bus stop accidents this week. We take these issues seriously. These are kids, and we want to protect them. At the Tampa accident, one of the fire and rescue trucks responding to the crash actually struck a car a few blocks away, resulting in three more people being transported to local hospitals as precaution. They also struck a power pole after they hit the car, knocking out power to the area. This isn't a partisan politics issue. This is a problem which we have to discuss, all of us, to see if we can improve safety. Let's do that and leave the politics behind. When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. I found a lot of interesting statistics when I researched this issue, including the number of school buses in the National Fleet and the number of children which they transport every day. Of the roughly 140 deaths each year, only about 8% were inside the school bus at the time. Pedestrians are two and a half times more likely to be struck and killed, and a shocking two-thirds of those pedestrians killed are struck by the school bus. The bulk of those killed are occupants of other vehicles which strike or are struck by the bus at around 72% of total fatalities. That got me thinking some more about what changes we needed to consider. School bus transportation actually has a pretty respectable safety record despite the fact that I personally believe that we can improve safety features and practices to further reduce the rate of death and injury. After all, I'm a parent who has kids which ride in a school bus and I have to acknowledge my personal bias in this matter. I'm not going to change my position to account for that bias, though. Um, no. Just, no. These are kids that we're talking about, and I think that we actually do need to think of the children in this matter. This isn't protecting them from imagined threats, nor is it just for them. Six out of the seven people killed in these accidents are adults and these accidents are largely preventable. School buses are huge vehicles. Like any large vehicle, they have blind spots. They also have pedestrians moving around them all of the time as they load and drop off. Passing a stopped school bus is idiotic, yet it happens all of the time. The laws about passing vary from state to state, but every state has these laws just as every state has laws about yielding to emergency vehicles drivers must be held accountable for their actions, and the most dangerous weapon that we see every day is a distracted driver behind the wheel of a two-ton vehicle. It doesn't matter if the car is self-driving either. The driver is still responsible for controlling the vehicle, and that means that drivers have to pay attention. Put down the cell phone, quit fiddling with the radio, and take a few minutes to eat before you drive instead of during your trip. Don't drive drunk or tired or while arguing. Studies show that all of these things are significant factors in accidents caused by a loss of control while driving. Slow down. Whatever you are in such a hurry to get to, it will still be there if you drive the speed limit. Pay attention to traffic and road conditions as well. 
when it's raining or snowing, you have to slow down a bit. Visibility around school buses is improved by a series of mirrors, but I think that we need to install some cameras as well. They can not only relay information to the driver through a screen which comes up when the bus stops, like backup cameras do on newer model cars to help keep the pedestrians safe, but they can also be set to record the cars which pass illegally and their drivers. These recordings will provide more evidence to aid law enforcement. They will also help school administrators to evaluate potential safety issues and make changes before anyone gets hurt. We already have cameras inside the school buses to help prevent bullying, don't we? Why wouldn't we do the same outside the bus where 92% of all fatalities occur? For that matter, schools should be evaluating their pickup locations, routes, and procedures more carefully. The accident in Indiana could have been entirely prevented if the bus wasn't stopping on the far side of a curve on a busy highway, making the kids cross during increased traffic hours. Indeed, the school district involved has already changed the pickup location for safety reasons. The driver saw the lights but didn't realize that it was a school bus, which means that she was probably used to passing emergency vehicles with their lights flashing when driving along that stretch of highway. The parents of the kids which were hit asked for the bus stop to be moved prior to the accident because of safety concerns, repeatedly. I honestly don't see how the school district will avoid a massive lawsuit or how the driver of the car will avoid years of jail time in addition to her own lawsuit. Certainly, no one involved will avoid the memories of the day in which an entire family of kids were wiped out and another critically injured. But I digress. The government has a responsibility in this too. We elected representatives to enact common sense laws and to enforce them. Strengthening the penalties for passing a stopped school bus and funding the mechanical improvements to the school bus fleet is actually their job. Time to get busy, ladies and gentlemen, or we, the voting public, will find someone who will do the job we elected you to do. While you are at it, maybe you should consider funding the installation of proper safety belts in buses for the kids to use. But Roast, that's going to be expensive. The taxpayer cannot afford to pay for everything. On this one, folks, yes, they can. Installing additional cameras like the ones I suggested would cost about $1,000 to $1,500 per bus using a quick estimate. So that's half to three quarters of a billion dollars, which is a lot of money, I admit. But if it's being paid by federal grant money from the Department of Education, well, I think that we can afford to spare a few tenths of a percent of the national budget. Seat belts would be more expensive by up to an order of magnitude depending on which study is cited. I think that the federal government should seriously consider making grant dollars available to replace older school buses with new buses, which as of 2011 are required to be built with three-point safety harnesses installed for smaller buses and are available for large school bus models. The manufacturers also refuse to warranty retrofitted school buses which get seat belts installed after the sale due to concerns about the mounting points for the seats in the floor. Issuing grants to replace most of the buses in the fleet would cost billions if not tens of billions of dollars. But passing a law which requires that all new school buses, large and small, must have three-point seat belts would cost very little. I'm fine with this change being phased in because of the cost involved but it needs to happen. And I for one think that the Department of Education should provide grants to school districts to make these changes. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Check out these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell.